Good afternoon, boys and girls, and I have just made it by the skin of my teeth. I had a few technical issues just a few seconds ago, which means that I'm shock horror, one minute late. Sorry about that, but thank you very much for tuning into episode 97 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, coming to you live from YouTube. Um, I'm just going on the tablet here to make sure that everything is coming through loud and clear. And first comment today goes from Angela. Hi, it's Ange from Leeds. Excited to watch first live. Thank you very much for tuning in, Angela, and thank you very much for all the comments you've left in, in the last day or so. I guess, I guess you're new to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. So, uh, what are we doing today? Today is another one of our best of episodes. Uh, before I tell you what it's about, as though you couldn't guess, or maybe couldn't guess from seeing the um, video description, I should say if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please, please consider doing so. Uh, please give this video a, a like if you've enjoyed it. If you're watching it on Facebook or any other channels, please give it the equivalent of a like, heart, thumbs up, all of those sorts of things are very welcome. Uh, if you're watching live, please feel free to say hello and ask a question, but even if you're watching the recording, comments are always welcome. Uh, and also do please consider um, uh, supporting my work on coffee. You will find out what that is in the video description below. This is also going to be for a little while, don't worry too much, or maybe actually you won't be worried, maybe maybe this, is good, this news is going to come as a, a bit of relief for you. This is also going to be the final episode of Love at First Scent for a little while, not for too long. I'm going to have to pack up this sort of makeshift studio for a little while, so I would imagine there aren't going to be any videos for at least two weeks, possibly three, but but um, I, I will let you know what's happening on, on social media, which means we've got to wait that tiny little bit longer for um, episode 100. We're not far away from episode 100 at all, at all. Thank you very much for helping me to get to this stage, by the way. I recently went over the 3,000 subscriber mark on YouTube, so thanks for that. And now here we are at episode 97. Thank you very much for that as well. Um, I will look at all of your comments and questions. I have a feeling that you are going to have lots to say today, but just to acknowledge the ones that have come through so far. Anne Kalha says hi. Frederick says hi. The Burrow Nerdy Fragrance Review says, hey, from Kentucky. I love your name, by the way. Nubianette says hi, watching from Oakland. Thanks for tuning in. Dream of Me No More says hello. Teresa says hi from Zurich. And Angela says, I have plenty to catch up on. Well, yeah, a 90, 90, well, you've seen a few, but 90 odd episodes. Um, it's taking a while for these. I can see the comments coming faster here. This is so frustrating. Uh, Laurie says, hi, dear Persilase. Hello. Anna says hello from Germany. And Fabi says hi from Germany. <gasps> I wonder if you're in the same part of Germany. What are the odds of that? And Andre says hello from Manchester. Okay. I will look at all of those as we go along as well. Keep them coming. This is what we are doing today. It's a best of rundown by type of perfume, not by brand today. I am going to be presenting to you, and we need to get a move on because we're almost at five minutes now and we have to do this in under an hour. I'm going to go through with you my top 10 favorite jasmine perfumes. Ta-da! Hence the stage prop <laughs> labeled jasmine. For those of you who figured it out, well done. Uh, and Fabi says, this is really annoying. These comments are taking a while <laughs> to show up here. Um, they're faster over there. Technology, don't let us down. Fabi says, favorite Jasmine, Joy by Jean Patou. Mm. Will it be in my top 10? Who knows? Okay. The usual sort of rules, and I use that word loosely, apply with the top 10s in that I tell myself not to overthink them because if I allowed myself to overthink them, I would literally never be able to reduce it to a top 10. And the uh, same as with all of the lists I've made before, I st it starts off well and then I think, oh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm kind of clear about what my top 10 favorite Jasmines are. It's not that difficult. And then I very easily get to 10 and then it goes 11 and 12 and 13 and 14. And then I think, oh dear, this is actually going to be quite tough. And then I tell myself to stop being over analytical, over rationalizing and just go with the moment. Um, that That is hard as well because there are a few perfumes that I really like, which I had to leave out. But I thought, OK, just go with what, go with how you're feeling at the moment. Some may be controversial. We shall see. I think we should start with one. And I'm kind of wondering whether to sort of get the most obvious one out of the way first. I wonder if I wonder if you all know what I mean by the most obvious one. I think we should. I, th I, th I think we should do it. I think we should start with this. And then I would imagine, oh, Anne Calha says, is superstitious in it. Uh, Frederick Mal is superstitious. <sighs> You'll have to find out. Alain Nui, Dream of Me No More, says, Okay, the other obvious one. 
<laughs> in a way. Although maybe this isn't actually the obvious one. Um, here we go. We need to do this. And then I think a lot of people immediately are going to go, but that's not a jasmine perfume. Well, it kind of is, kind of isn't. Um, but I think we need to do this one. It is, of course, Chanel uh, number no. five by Chanel. Um, this was originally released, as you know, in 1921, which means it is also approaching a, a very big anniversary. Uh, uh, composed by Ernest Beau. Um, and the, the, because this is, as you know, I mean, I almost feel like I don't really need to smell this. You just sort of say, yeah, one of them is Chanel number no. five, let's move on. And I, and I should do uh, a Chanel number no. five standalone video because Chanel number no. five is going to keep coming up in a lot of lists, I think, so that at some point I could just say, and on this list is Chanel number no. five. And if you'd like to find out what I think of Chanel number no. five, go to this video. I need to do one of those ones. But yes, of course, it, it can also be classified as a, a kind of more abstract um, floral, an aldehydic floral, but um, the heart of it, uh, even though it is it is a, a pretty abstract scent, let's pop it here. Can you still see that if I do that there? Because it is such a tiny bottle. Yeah, I think you can just about see it. The heart of it is, of course, a heart of jasmine and and ylang, ylang ylang. Um, so it it qualifies. But I think you will see as we go through my top ten that some are more. <sighs> Some are more puristly, or pure, is that a word? We just made it up. Some, some are more overtly, more obviously jasmine, and some are more symphonic, uh, more abstract. I had to include this. Now, this is actually a bottle of the X-ray that I was very, very fortunate to pick up a few years ago in Japan, and it is in pretty good condition. But the one that I'd like to sp spray today is is the sort of current iteration, and it's actually the... Um, the atomizer, I think they sort of call it the, the handbag atomizer, the, the purse atomizer. Um, uh, and I, I quite like the fact that you sort of get a nice um, spray with these. And this feels really, really bad spraying Chanel number no. five extract on a blotter. But if I, if there's so many smells coming at me from the collection here. If I don't, if I, if I spray it on skin, then that's, that is all I will be smelling. And I, I think the sort of received wisdom at the moment is that if you want to get um, Chanel Number no. Five in its most jasmine-centered form, then you uh, you need to you need to um, spray the X-ray. Technical issue. Gino is saying crackling sound from the mic. Could anybody else please let me know if there is a crackling sound? Because if if it's just you, Gino, then I won't change anything. But if if it's if it's lots of other people, it may be. Is this the crackling sound? Hang on, let me try and reproduce the crackling sound. It's not my creaky joints, but it's what I'm sitting on. So I wonder if it's the mic or me. Um, if it's still carrying on, then maybe I'll disconnect the mic. Hang on, let's try this. Let's try this. Live TV, folks. Is that better? Ah, well, well spotted people. Now, lots of people are saying yes, but now I don't know whether you're saying yes to yes, it's crackling or yes, it's better. <laughs> so just please say, is it okay? Ashfaq says it's the mic now better, better. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Lots of betters coming through. I love this. I, I just get such a kick out of this. I'm okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Need, thanks for who or who, who gets the medal? Who gets the medal for speaking out? Um, Gino from rainy Singapore. Um, thanks for saying that, actually, because that would have been a bit of a disaster if we'd had a, a whole episode with Crackling Mike. Anyway, um, moving on. So here's the x -ray. Chanel number no. five. I won't say a huge amount about this because because you've all smelled Chanel number no. five. I've talked about it lots before, although I'll probably fall into a swoon now as soon as I smell it. Oh, Anna's actually saying <laughs> you thought it was your headphones. Sorry, sorry, but we're OK now. It's interesting this actually. I really should do, uh, I really must do a video on all the different versions of number five because to me, what, what, what sort of has got stuck in my head as the most quintessentially number five, number five, is the Eau de Parfum. I know that for a lot of people, it's the Eau de Toilette. Um, I guess a lot depends on which is the one that you smelt first or which is the one that has the, the most significance for you, depending on who may have worn it in your life, I don't know. And I haven't smelled the X-ray for a little while, but smelling it now, at least on, on the blotter here, I think, oh, um, 
this version isn't quite so aldehydic as, as what I consider number five to be. And it is actually much more floral, much more overtly jasmine ylang ylang, which is what makes it appropriate to this list. I suppose maybe when I do, when I actually write the list in the video description, I need to specify and say Chanel number five extrait. Um, and it's, it's probably the most, the most classically perfumey. Um, this, this is probably the one that speaks to us the most of the past. I mean, and, and obviously the Eau de Parfum actually in, in, is, is, is a much more recent version anyway. Um, but it's just, it, it, it's, ju it's just the, quint the quintessential French perfume, isn't it? What else is there to say? I still think that one of the best things I've ever written about Chanel Number no. 5 is from Lizzie Ostrom's book, um, Century of Scents, because she makes the point that because Chanel have very cleverly tweaked the perfume as the years have passed, it's always somehow managed to speak to its, to its current age. Um, and so it becomes this, this, this beast of adaptation. It seems to both speak of the past and, and of the present. Perhaps it's been, perhaps in the last few years, it's been the least successful in speaking about the present because it isn't quite the blockbuster monster that it was. And I guess that's why Chanel have been doing things like, you know, making the low version, making the au premier version, which is beautiful as well, because, because it's, it's crown has finally begun to slip but hey you know i mean it was it, it reigned supreme for so long um and justly so i mean it it, it is just flawless it is perfect I, I i cannot think of a single thing that is wrong with this perfume and everything is in the right place you sort of, you can you can pick out the notes and yet they blend into seamless perfection and the word that always comes back to me with Chanel number no. five is very boring and I keep using the same word, but it, it, it is sophistication. It some, somehow seems to be the essence of sophistication. So first one, get it out of the way nice and quick. Um, Chanel number no. five, the extra version. Right, let's look at some comments that I, I may have missed. Uh, Ashfaq says, Saracin, uh, oh, you're going to hate me at the end of this episode. Shimon says, hello from Warsaw. Cześć. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Ashfaq says, perhaps Salome, maybe. Uh, and Shimon again, Jasmine and cigarette on your list. Mm, maybe, maybe. I need to be careful to not slip into Polish just because there's like a few people <laughs> speaking Polish here. And then we, and then we had all of the stuff about uh, the mic. Thanks again for that. Uh, Angela says, still have a bottle of Exe somewhere, and while it's a classic and beautiful, it's not my favourite. Fair enough, that's absolutely more than fair. Um, Darius says, hi from Lithuania, scent of the day is Terre d'Hermes Eau Fraiche, you smell great. Angela says, had all of them, but pref prefer the Eau de Parfum over the EDT and the Extra. Angeline says, hello. A dream of me is offering a list of favourite jasmines. Here are some of mine. A la nuit. Uh, Jasmine Marzipan, Saracin, Superstitious, Samsara, 1932, and Cedre Sombach. Mm, you may like this list. Um, Joao says, hi, Mr. P. Scent of the day is Diptyque, low. And Fabi says, I bought a vintage 80s bottle of the X-ray last year. When opening it, the, sop the stopper got stuck. No. And I ripped the entire bottle apart. Wow. Had you had a like tin of spinach before that? Kitchen table smelt beautifully afterwards. Yeah, I bet it did. Ooh, that, that's, that's an experience and a half. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. Right, this one's been mentioned, uh, and because I just read it out, Shimon, this is, this is just for you. Here you go, from Etat Libre d'Orange, uh, Jasmine and Cigarettes, Jasmine and Cigarettes. Uh, I'm just looking here at my list. This was launched in 2006, composed by Antoine Maison Dieu. Um, really, really love this one, and I've talked about this one quite a bit, and um, I actually interviewed uh, Maison Dieu in, in relation to a completely different perfume. And he, he, he revealed in the interview, I expect I've told you this story before, that the whole connection with um, cigarettes uh, came from, I think he said a, a former girlfriend, an ex-girlfriend, and um, the fact that I'm pretty sure it was her car, or maybe it was somebody's car, maybe it was his car, but for some reason he associated the smell of her, and, and I guess she must have worn a jasmine perfume, with um, the cigarettes that were always in the ashtray of this car, you know, back in the day when car ashtrays were always full of cigarette butts. And to him, this became 
um, the, the sort of connected jasmine and cigarettes, and, and so he, he felt he had to make a perfume on it. Um, I love the fact that lots and lots of different people can respond in so many completely different ways to the same perfume, because for me, as some of you will be aware, I'm sure I've talked about this before, for me, this is the only jasmine perfume that takes me back to um, the house of my uh, grandparents when they were living in um, Shiraz and in Iran and we're talking then about sort of like late 70s, early 80s. And it was only years later that I found out that um, they, they, did, they did have a jasmine growing in their garden. Because um, for some reason, every single time I smelled this and just a few other varieties of types of jasmine perfumes, I would instantly be taken back to the, to the sort of side road to the, to the side entrance to their house and, and I actually had to ask my father and say you know, did they have a jasmine growing there, is that why I keep um, thinking of, of my grandparents' house um, it's, it's a really, really, really beautiful quality of jasmine that's in this um, a lot of people like the fact that um, it gets really, really dirty and that, that, that stale ashtray smell, because it's not just cigarettes, but it's cigarettes that have been hanging around for a little bit too long. That stale ashtray smell is so note perfect towards the end that it almost makes the perfume a little bit hard to take. Um, and and, I, and I, I confess I prefer the earlier stages of this perfume more than, than the later stages, but, but, but I love it all. I think it's a fantastic achievement. I think it's wonderful that, you know, Atta Libre d'Orange have such a classically beautiful perfume in their catalogue. I think their blurb says that it's inspired by, by the sort of film noir element of Blade Runner, unless I'm mistaken. And who's the, the replicant played by Sean Young? She's called Rachel, isn't she? And the, the very, very film noir style scenes of Rachel moving between areas of shadow and light and, and smoking cigarettes. So, so there you go, you know, um, ex-girlfriends, a cigarette filled car, my grandparents house in Iran and Deckard and Rachel wondering if they're replicants in a sci-fi film noir, all in one perfume. So thank you Antoine Maison Dieu, thank you um, Etat Livre d'Orange. It's really, really beautiful and, and really interesting blend of, of the classical and the modern. Um, comments while we, before we move on to the third one. Ashfaq says perhaps Jasmine Imperatrice Eugenie by Creed. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I think there's every possibility we might have a Creed on this list. You're, you're, gonna, you're on the way to getting yourself blocked, Ashfaq. Uh, Dream of Me No More says, will Alien be on the list? Okay, I may talk about that in a sec. Angela, Jasmine is so beautiful, though I do have a problem with a few Jasmine scents. Yes, I mean, it, it's, it's handled in so many different ways as a note. Shimon, I think Cabochard has a similar feel, although the notes are completely different. Wow, I need to revisit that. You know your perfumes, don't you? I need to revisit. Uh, Hugo says, seems fantastic. It really is. An olfactive stories. I love Dior Grand Bal. I think this is my favorite jasmine fragrance. I really, really, really liked it. And I always um, enjoyed it on Madame Persolet's when she wore it. But but it's not it's not on my list. And in fact, I need to remind myself that, okay, this is probably a good moment to just spare a few words for the ones that, the, the, the sort of main ones that didn't make it onto the list. Alien, who asked about Alien? Dream of me no more. Alien didn't make it on the list. It nearly did. In fact, I even brought this version of Alien here just to show you. I don't even know whether it's still made by Mugler. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to go on their site. I thought this was an extraordinary. This is the Essence Absolue version of Alien. I don't know if any of you remember this one. It came in this particular bottle. This was just heavenly. I mean, ju just such, such an amazing scent. If it is still around and you haven't ever tried it, you must. Um, Lots of reasons, you know, I don't want to do a whole sort of spiel on why various ones didn't make it into it, but I suppose for me, even though obviously Alien is a, is a jasmine perfume, it's also just about so many other things. It's about it's about the woods, it's about the, 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 the cashmere. So Alien you won't find on this list. Superstitious isn't on the list, although actually I have to say that Superstitious for me was never going to make it on, onto this list. But the ones that nearly did are Estee Lauder's Beyond Paradise, which I love. Uh, certain versions of Dior's J'adore, which especially when, you know, when J'adore first came out, it was really, really gorgeous. The, the J'adore Absolu, I think, is, is probably the, the best version of the, at the moment. And the, the Touche de Parfum was really, really good as well. In a kind of curveball kind of way, I wondered about Caron's uh, Troisième Homme, 
which, which but then I thought okay it, it's got a prominent jasmine note in it but actually it's it's it, it is a fougere and what's clever about it is that it's, it's it's a sort of floral fougere but that didn't make it on onto there so if you haven't tried that one one that that actually was on the list and then I decided to do a last minute check to find out um, whether it's still in production and it's not so I thought well I only really want to do things that I'm pretty sure are still in production it was actually this uh, I, one of those fantastic French names that I really struggle to pronounce is La Haye, La Haye Fleury from L'Artisan Parfumeur. Really, really good jasmine soliflor, but it's not on their website at the moment, so I guess it didn't make the transition to the current range. Um, but but if, 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 if you find it around somewhere, really, really worth checking out. So those are some of the ones that um, that you will not see in the remaining eight. Let's move on to... Let's move on to number three... Oh, this is tense. Um, okay, let's do a fairly recent one. In fact, looking at my list, yeah, this is 2018. So this this is the, um, uh, the the most recent one on the list. And again, one of the ones that I sort of ummed and nod about because I thought, oh, well, it's quite new. You know, can I really say that it's one of my favorite jasmines? But then I thought, well, it, it is. I do enjoy wearing it. You, you'll probably struggle to see the name there. Um, what's the best way of showing it? You can already tell that it's it's, it's an Hermesence. It's from Hermes. This is Cedre Sombac. Uh, and this is from the collection that they released a couple of years ago when Christine Nagel decided to do a few entries in the Hermesence. Uh, that was the same time when she also did the Cardamusk, when she did Ag Agarabène. Uh, I forget what the other one was actually, but she did five in one go, didn't she? She did two oils and three perfumes. And this is uh, a really, really beautiful take on the whole idea of linking jasmine with woods. Make sure you can still see that if I pop that there. If you haven't checked this out, please do. Um, yeah, this is... Actually smelling it now... It really, really makes me think of the Etat Libre d'Orange, of, uh, of the, the Jasmine cigarette, because it's a very, very clear um, jasmine, but whereas the Etat Libre d'Orange mixes it with that, you know, that sort of tobacco note, the cigarette note, this is doing it with a cedar note. Um, and I'm also picking up the, 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 the animalic side of the jasmine seems to be quite a bit stronger on paper now, the indolic side. So this is... This is this is this is a jasmine that seems to be growing growing in a forest. You know that, that the balance here between the cedar and the jasmine note is just perfect, pretty much all the way through to the end. I mean, this is a, a wonderful exercise in presenting two uh, materials running by, side by side um, through. You know, almost throughout the development of the perfume. So, sorry, I'm just sort of losing my train of thought because I'm smelling this and actually remembering how wonderful it is and sort of thinking, why, why, why did I hesitate to put this on my list? Um, and there's something, the connection of the jasmine and the wood and the cedar somehow brings out something tangy, something almost lime-like, lemon-like. Um, and you, you just sort of picture, I'm just sort of picturing like really, really grand monolithic mountains completely festooned with jasmine petals. There's something very, very convincingly natural and outdoorsy. You know, like Chanel number no. five, Chanel number no. five is 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 very very sophisticated. So you know, sort of rich fabrics. Jasmine a cigarette uh, is is really really urban. You know, it is this. It is a smell that you would associate with driving and roads and streets and pavements. You know, even I think of a city. Um, Serre Saint Bac is miles miles away. You know, far from the madding crowd. And it's silent as well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of wide blue, completely cloudless skies. Um, and I, I guess I'm thinking of the sorts of landscapes that I associate as well with, with, with Morocco. You know, you do think of, of, of cedar in relation to Morocco. Gorgeous piece of work Re and, and really, really nice handling of some quite cuddly Vet velvety musks in the vase, but but the, the animalic side has, has, has surprised me. I, I, I don't remember, didn't remember it being quite so animalic. Okay, so that's number three. Uh, some comments. Um, where are we? 
Uh, Angeline says, I've been very intrigued by the ashy notes of night clubbing by Celine. Been testing it for a while. So many of you are telling me about these Celine perfumes. I haven't been able to try them yet. Uh, Angela says she struggles to like Alien. Um, Isaac says, Jasmine Rouge by Tom Ford is also nice. Yeah, lots of people like that one. Um, Couldn't you do a worst of when you come back, says Angela. I suppose I could, but that would be a bit mean. I don't know. Uh, Angeline says that she likes uh, J'adore Touche. Marta says, good afternoon. I have to mention the uh, the Lost Between Other Jasmine Wonders, Jasmine Angelique by Atelier Cologne. Fair enough. This is such an amazing, meaty, bitter, a bit masculine Jasmine. Olfactive Story says, perfect pronunciation. What for the L'Artisan? Thank you, but my, my throat will never recover. Ashvark says, I have a 5 mil official dabber. It's quite sweet on my skin. The jasmine in it, if I remember correctly, is quite creamy, sadly not am- animalic enough for me. Ooh. Dream of Me No More says, Troisième homme I would have had. Boy is also a contender for Fougère with jasmine added. Yes, yeah, f- fair enough, good point. Darius says, I own and love Centre Saint Back. Glad to hear it. Napak says, Oh, I thought I've been watching the video clip all along, but just realized that it's streaming. <laughs> I love that. No, you're live. You're with us. <laughs> Feel free to comment away. Uh, Dior Grand Bal and Frederic Mount Superstitious. And I really want to try that Hermes one you just mentioned. Uh, please do. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Uh, Grand Bal and Superstitious, not on the list. Olfactive Story says, I love the Hermes Osmond Yunan. Yeah, lots of fans for that one. Uh, dream of me no more. I would have before 2010 Diorella as a jasmine scent. I really miss that one. Mm, mm. Uh, Nick says hello. Angela says, "What about the ten worst creeds?" Then <laughs> you lot, you're just trying to wind me up now. And Angeline, I completely forgot about the cedar song back. The animalic note is stronger, and there's also a greasy kind of finish. Yeah, good word actually. I like that. Uh, I must wear this again. Okay, so number four, we need to move on. Uh, because we've still got quite a lot to do. Let's do another obvious one, because this is the one... If you, if those of you who've watched this before will know that my bottle of Serge Lutin's A la Nuit has lost its label. Um, I don't take any responsibility for that, because this is from Madame Persolaise's collection. Today, as I took the this from her collection and two more, she actually said, oh, you could have asked me before taking them, to which I just shrugged nonchalantly and then sort of said, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I beg your forgiveness. Um, we probably don't need to spend a huge amount of time uh, smelling à la nuit, but for those of you who are not aware of it, it's from 2000, 20 years old already, uh, from the brand Serge Lutens, composed by Christopher Sheldrake, and a pr- pr- easily, easily one of the best, one of the most convincing uh, jasmine solid floors ever made. This is... Yeah. So, the, again, apologies if you've heard me say this before, but there is this, there is this idea out there in, in, in some quarters of perfume fandom land that it's very easy to do a solid floor because all you have to do is take the, you know, like in this case, take some kind of jasmine material and just dilute it. Well, nothing could be further from the truth because the whole point of creating a convincing solid floor is that the perfumer is supposed to give you the illusion, the impression that all they have done is just diluted the star material. Um, You know, very often, if you were to just take the the main material and dilute it, you would end up with a a, a bit of nothing, really. But a, a skilled perfumer would sort of stretch the material out and sort of say, okay, so this is what I'm getting here at the top, so that's what I'll try to emphasize, and then I'll make, I'll use this as a bridge to go into the next bit, and then I'll, I'll highlight this, I'll, I'll underline that, this is what I'll do in the base to kind of stretch that bit out. It, it really, really requires a lot of perfumery skill because the whole idea is, paradoxically, to, to make you believe that it's not a perfume, to make you believe that it's something, you know, squeezed straight from jasmine petals and, and poured into a bottle drop by drop. And A La Nuit does that. And it probably is the perfume, well, bar one, because I've got one as well that is a pretty strong contender for fantastic solid floor, but it's one that not a lot of you will have tried. Um, this this has got this has got the greenness of jasmine, the the banana like note of jasmine, that slightly paint strippery aspect of jasmine. You know, if you get really really close to ja- too close to jasmine, um, and it 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 is just like a, a you know a, a beautiful jasmine garland. Um, that that's a hint 
to the one that I said is another really good jasmine solid floor that maybe some of you may not have tried. So see if you can have a guess. Um, the, the hint was garland. Um, and it's just, the, the only thing that I think I have said before is this, the, the name a la nuit obviously has con connotes nighttime and nocturnal images. That's the only thing that I disagree with in this perfume. To me, this actually feels like a sort of, it, 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 it's a bright scent, you know, it's a sunny scent. Um, and I know that that's not the sort of main time when jasmines release their smell, but the, the sun is really, really shining in this perfume um, and and bringing out the greenness of the surroundings. So you don't just see the jasmine flowers, but, but you see beautifully trimmed, fresh green grass as well. Really, really fantastic piece of work. Uh, comments again. Gino says maybe a top uh, top le labo. Yeah, good idea. Keep those ideas coming, by the way, for the for the best of uh, videos. Uh, Dream of me no more says lust by lush is a contender for top ten jasmine. Yeah, I like lust. It's not on this list. Denby says the jasmine in uh, Patu's joy was nice. Couldn't agree with you more. S Murphy says hello, late from Edinburgh. Never mind. You're more than welcome. Dream of me no more says the ombre solaire aspects. Uh, oh, as in 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 in, in um, lust. Yeah. Angeline says La Fleury was created by Jean Claude Elena. First, I've heard of it, and now I'm curious. It, it really, really is a beautiful, beautiful jasmine soliflor. And Tina says, Jasmine Marzipan by Maison Lancôme is a smooth jasmine. Oh, from their exclusive ones. I think I've just tried it once, and I can't remember it very well. But um, yeah, something to look out for. So we are over the half an hour mark, and I need to make sure that we get on to five. So, 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 so... Let's do let's do another one that I've pinched from Madame Persolais, and I think, uh, if memory serves, this is one that I've spoken about not that long ago as well. This is Songe from uh, Anik Goutal, or as the new packaging now expects us to call it, Goutal. Uh, and this first came out in 2005, composed by um, Isabelle Doyen, who of course makes all of their perfumes now with um, Anik Goutal's daughter Camille. Uh, and this is this is just seductiveness in in a, in a bottle. It's so swoon worthy. Do you think it's time I move this now? Have we had enough of this green jasmine book? Yes. Let's let's start populating this with with more perfumes. Actually, let's pop that one there. How does that look? Does that work? Interior design, folks. Not one of my strong points. And this, of course, isn't isn't just a jasmine. So you know, whereas Alain Nuit plays the single pitch perfect jasmine note really really well. This is uh, Songe is more of a composed uh, fragrance. It's it's got that 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 frangipani note as well, um, sort of almond like uh, aspect to it too, and it's it's more opaque. Alain Nuit is beautifully crystal clear, transparent. This is this is a haze of heat. This is um, th this is humidity. Uh, this is, you know, lying on a beach in a deserted island, partly because you're enjoying lying there, but also partly because you couldn't possibly move because the, the sun has, in the most gorgeous way imaginable, drained every ounce of energy from your limbs, and you can just about reach across and, and pick up a, a, a drink and, you know, sip it through a straw to cool yourself down. Um, Languid, thank you very much. Angeline says languid, uh, a very, very languid, tropical, blooming tropical scent. Yeah, totally, totally. This is where, you know, you sort of want to stick a lily in your hair, which I'm known to do very, very often, and, and just completely douse yourself in the, in the smell of tropicality. There isn't really a fruity note here as such, but, but, but it's, it's, somebody said creamy. Yeah, absolutely. It, I couldn't agree more. And, and it, you, you think of things like, you know, papayas and guavas and beautiful bowls of fruit. And it starts taking you maybe as well in the direction of, you know, Sophia Groisman's um, Calyx, which is now done by prescriptives. Um, it's, it's, it's a heat induced swoon. It really is. And I should leave it at that because we have got five more to go. And let me look at some comments as well. Common Sense Fragrances says, I like Aumont Jane White Gold to get my jasmine fix. Fair enough. Napak, is Dior Amour going to be on the list? Have heard a lot about it, but never got to try it. No, it's not. And I honestly can't remember if I did it, uh, if I featured it on my video of the uh, Dior exclusives. So check it out. If you, 
if you search for that video, uh, you, you, you'll, you, you should be able to find it on YouTube. Uh, Davlon says, uh, late hello from Toronto, Canada. You're more than welcome. I hope that Lutin Sarasin makes an appearance. Actually, let me deal with this now. As you know, I adore Sarasin. It's one of my favorite perfumes ever. But I don't turn to it for a jasmine fix, to use the word that somebody did, even though, of course, it's a jasmine. Um, but that was another one that I ummed and ahed about. Um, and in the end, I thought, okay, because we've got Alain Nui, let's try to do this as a only one brand, you know, um, one perfume per brand is what I'm trying to say. So I actually nearly wept. No, I didn't, but you know, sounds good. Um, that I didn't decided not to include Sarah Sound, but be, because I think of it more of as, as a sort of darker leathery scent. Um, maybe I should do a sort of top 10 unusual jasmines, but Sarah Sound, masterpiece, and on any other day, it would have had a very, very strong chance of making it onto the, this list. So Davlone, please donate me. Uh, Ashwak says, perhaps uh, Nuit du Bac Elite. Uh, I think of that more as a tuberose. Frederick says, I love Songe. Uh, Tomasz, hello from the south of Poland. Hi. As for Jasmine, I like it when it's accompanied by citruses, as in uh, Etali Bordorange's Cologne, or Truffit and Hill Trafalgar Cologne, or Zarco Perfumes Cloud Collection Number 2. Ah, fair enough. AJ says, Songe is lovely, but it's much more of a creamy ylang ylang to me. Yeah, I, I would go along with that, but you know, the two are very important in there. Also, the Jasmine Absolute actually turns the scent blood red over time. Ooh, interesting. AJ happens with Jasmine de Nuit by the different company. Another wonderful, slightly endolic Jasmine with a swoon-worthy Garlinade-esque base. Nick says, Erin uh, has a very convincing Jasmine in her range. It's called Ikat Jasmine, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you're right. And I remember enjoying that one as well, actually. Angela saying, loved Calix. Olfactive stories. I have Erin Ikat Jasmine. It's a beautiful, innocent Jasmine scent. Gino says, Fleur de Lalita by Ducita is a beautiful bouquet of white flowers and Jasmine. And Jamie, hands down, my favorite jasmine fragrance is Zerjoff Al Hut. So by default, its designer counterpart, uh, Mugler's Alien Oud uh, Magister, is a like two. Oh, is a like two? I see. Oh, that a Oud Magister. Did, did I did I like it? I can't remember. I remember. I think I found it a little bit of hard work. Anyway, at the halfway point. Just a reminder that you are watching episode 97 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise. If you're watching live on YouTube, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching the recording, thank you very much for watching it. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Likes, hearts, thumbs up, comments, questions, all of those are welcome. But we need to do another five perfumes in about 22 minutes, so we need to get a move on. Um, have I got a five here? Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, let's do... I wonder what's going to be a good one to finish on. Let's 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 do let's do slightly controversial, okay? And and um, this is this perfume doesn't exist in, in in this packaging anymore. I'm sure a lot of you out there, fan diehard perfume fans, will immediately recognize the brand because this is the packaging in which Garlin released some of their scents a while ago. Um, this is th this particular one is Samsara, and I can I can just about imagine now. Just picture loads and loads of people switching off, saying, oh my god, he's actually included Samsara in a top 10. But somebody else agreed with me, at least a few people. I actually really, really like Samsara. Samsara came out in 1989. It was composed by Jean-Paul Garlin. It came at a tricky time for Garlin when uh, the, the company was going through a, a, a bit of turbulence, shall we say. Um, I'm cheating a little bit because this is... <laughs> Angela goes, I hate Samsara. There you go. Destroy that like button, says Vladimir. Okay. Um, th this is a little bit of a cheat because this is this is one of the original formulations of, of uh, Galas Samsara. Okay. I managed to pick this up a few years ago at a perfumery in uh, the, the Charge of Souk in the UAE. So this is fantastic. I do think that current Samsara is, is pretty good as well. I mean, this is, you know, this is from the time... Uh, not that I want to sort of look at the past through rose-tinted glasses, but this is when perfume packaging said contains alcohol, fragrance, water. So I'm going to get very, very unwell when I, when I smell this now. Um, I, I, I do still like um, the current Samsara, but the original is better because it's just so much creamier. Uh, those of you who don't know Samsara, it's... Oh, it's so good. It's just so beautiful. Very, very um, simple idea in a way. The idea was to just do jasmine over sandalwood. And uh, just try and 
do that there. Jasmine isn't really a very, very obviously Garlin flower, in the same way that rose also isn't a really obviously Garlin flower. If you, if you think about it, the, the Garlin don't um, overtly, um, loyally, faithfully align themselves with any particular flower. The, the Garlinade is, is much more about, if it's such a thing exists, is much more about herbs and more aromatic notes. Um, and Jean-Paul Garlin, I guess, in the late 80s, thought that he would turn his attention to Jasmine and he, he gave us a real, real, real beauty. It's the, 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 the sandalwood, at least in this one, is really, really convincing because it's, it's milky, creamy, woody, present, prominent, but, but without ever becoming harsh or displaying those sort of smoky elements that a lot of modern sandalwood perfumes feel they need to do. I love them. So, you know, if you think of Tom Ford's Santal Blush, beautiful perfume, but it seems to feel the need to make uh, the sandalwood note smoky and of course sandalwood isn't actually smoky as such it, it, it's it's much more subtle than that um and this is i i, I like the fact that it's called samsara uh, the, the idea of you know the circle of of life death rebirth um because there is something meditative about the scent i guess from from the fact that it's it's got sandalwood sandalwood always seems to have meditative type qualities it, it, it makes me sort of slow down quieten down um but but the, the jasmine is really really sensuous the jasmine is really full-bodied full-blooded so i suppose the, the jasmine if we're looking at it conceptually is is the life and then I suppose the sandalwood is the sort of is 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 the permanence of death, but then the life comes back, and so maybe death is actually impermanent, and the only thing that is permanent is the constant change. I really love the fact that this idea of a sort of circularity um, was reflected in the original bottle, which which you will be able to see if you uh, look online, because of course Samsara now is 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 in is is in the sort of standard um, B bottle, but Samsara doesn't get enough love, I don't think. Lots of people have told me that in them it induces headaches, that they simply can't take it. I mean, fair enough, but some of us do do like it. And the, this this um, vintage version from the Charge Souk is just so smooth. I think that's the the, the, the main difference with the, 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 the new one, the current one, is that the sandalwood is just a bit harsher. And I think you can see how the scenery is being moved behind the scenes, that it's not quite so seamless anymore. Uh, Angie says, yes, agreed, Samsara is beautiful. Thank you very much, Angie. Tina says, agreed, just got the current Samsara, okay. Angela says, think it's the sandalwood I don't care for, though the TV advert for it was stunning. Ooh, I think, I wonder if it's on YouTube, I need to find out, but I can't because I'm on YouTube now. Ha <laughs> ha, sorry. Um, old Fact of Stories says, I think Garlinard has a vanilla, but also flowers like iris and violet. Yeah, we're definitely not discussing what may or may not be in the Garlinard now. Uh, uh, Hoiting Kimberly Fung says, I thought it was all about Ylang Ylang in Samsara. Well, I don't know about uh, all about. Definitely strong jasmine note. Napak says, love how poetic you can get. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you're probably in a minority there. Tomash says, now I know why I love Garlin so much, because it's not into flowers. It's aromatic and herbal. Well... I think the signature is aromatic and herbal, but I must check Samsara once again, perhaps I will like it. And Nick says, I've only smelled current Samsara and found it too dry for my taste. Mm. Interesting. Not a word I would have used to describe Samsara, but fair enough. Uh, okay, moving on. Let's do... This has been mentioned a few times. And again, this is not really strictly a jasmine perfume, but, you know, we'll make it count. A very, very old one. This is from... 1930 let's hold it where you'll be able to see the name the one and only oh come on the one and only joy from jean patou of course composed by henri almeras um this is the extrait i'm very very fortunate as well i just have to show this to you that i've got uh, an old oh is that angeline giving exclamation marks for joy i've got an old one here as well or an older one i should say they recently reissued this version didn't they to, for, for an, an anniversary i think Joy, I, I, I like to think that Joy works. Um, I know that the Patu house um, 
I was talking about turbulent times. I think they're going through a bit of a turbulent time as well. Again, this feels so sinful, wasting extra on, on, on a blotter. But I, I'm not wasting it because I'm sharing it with you. So it's not wasted, is it? Um, I actually keep this one in the fridge. It's one of the, it's one of the um, extras that I keep in the fridge, much to the consternation and amusement of Madame Persolais. Um, let's pop that there. Now, I was very, very, very fortunate, really, really lucky when I paid my visit to the Osmotech, uh, the, the perfume archive, the perfume repository in Versailles. I, Joy was one of the uh, perfumes that I smelt in its original formulation. And I know this image has been used before, but you know, you have to be honest with what comes to your mind. And whenever I smell Joy, and this was particularly true when I smelt that original one at the Osmotech, I just imagined this most beautifully rich woven carpet this carpet of petals, jasmine petals and rose petals, that just seemed to go on forever. And, and as you walked along it with your, with your legs, your feet, you know, throwing up these jasmine and rose petals into the air, you thought you kept, you keep thinking you're getting to the end of this carpet, but it's just sort of unfurling before you constantly, this, this, lit, this infinity carpet of rose and jasmine petals. That's what joy always has been to me and I suppose the difference between current formulation, current-ish formulation and the original that I smelled again with so many of these things is that I think you see the seams. In the original rose and jasmine were just fantastically interwoven into each other that you know there'd be a moment where you'd think no actually this is a jasmine perfume and then you'd go no 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 it's rose and 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 they would ju just keep playing this beautiful music together, you know, dancing this merry dance. In the current one, I think you can just see the seams, you know, you, you, you can sort of see the rose bits of the carpet and the jasmine bits of the carpet, but that's fine. Um, and really beautiful animalic facet to it as well. Um, oh, th this, this, is, this is just a perfume you want to sink into, you, you just I think that is the thing. You just sink into this, like like onto a perfect carpet. I'm I'm speeding up because just because I have to because we have to do three more. Uh, Angela says beautiful. Gino says that is beautiful. Wow. Kenzo says hello. I love Tom Ford Jasmine Rouge. Lots of love for the Tom Ford here. Actually, to me, it's a beautiful voluptuous jasmine scent. S Murphy love that one. Denby goes there. She is. Ashfaq says what years were your bottles produced? I'm not sure. I'd have to try and find out somehow. Fabi, oh joy, love of my life. Vintage versions are a lot stronger on the rose note. So beautiful. Ellie, is that right? I can't see. It is Ellie. Hello from Virginia, deep in the boonies. Love your insights. I learn so much from you. I learn just as much from all of you and I enjoy the videos a lot as well. So thank you. Seriously, thank all of you. Um, much, much gratitude from me. Angeline says, I only have a recent EDT of joy. It always gives me an immediate hit of jasmine blooms. The rose is less prominent. Interesting. And S. Murphy, older perfumes seem to be more blended. People today seem to want to pick out the notes in my opinion. Yes, and actually, interestingly, I wrote about something uh, like that a while ago. Um, and my way, AMS says, all love from uh, UAE. Marhaba, which part of the UAE? You have to tell me where you are, because I've mentioned the Sharjah Souk. So tell me where you are in the UAE. Um, next one, number, have I counted these right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, have I messed up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we're okay, phew. I was a bit worried there. In Abu Dhabi, okay, you're very, very welcome. This is from Andy Tower, Le Maroc pour elle, from, uh, uh, he said, pausing from 2005. This is, th this is the kind of the, the most niche jasmine in a way. And when I say niche, I mean a, a perfume that, look at the color of that. We've had this before here, haven't we? A, a perfume that doesn't mind being uh, reactionary. Um, and really just kind of throwing a whole load of stuff out there in a kind of guerrilla perfume maker type of way and just going, yeah, let's throw a bunch of stuff in. But of course, Andy Tower doesn't just do that. You know, he's not like a kid in a in a chemistry lab. Um, he is a, he's a very talented perfumer, but probably his this first perfume of his in some ways was also his most raw. Um, but I love it. I, I think it's one of his best. I love the fact that it's got that roughness to it. Totally, oh, it's just so good so fantastically indolic and so honeyed and and this is the one i'm getting lots of deja vu feelings here because um 
I feel like I've said this stuff before. This is the one that actually feels much more like an a la nuit jasmine than Lutens' a la nuit. I mean, this is dark, brooding, mysterious, connect strong connections with um, Saracen, um, but it's also kissed by the sun. Um, this, this is the sort of a few hours after the sunset where you still feel as though the, the, the earth around you is, is, is glowing with, with the heat of the sun and with the light of the sun. And the Morocco connection, you know, I ought to re-smell the, the Hermès Cedre Saint back because you know you, you you've had you had the beautiful mountains that were festooned with jasmine blossoms, but then you come down and you've got a darker campfire type setting, and the jasmine is going to come through the night and and wind its way around your heart. Um, not all nights need to be dark and dangerous, says Shimon. Um, well, they kind of need to be dark, but maybe not dangerous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, what do you mean? Why do you say it? No, they don't. Some of them can just be like, you know, popcorn and a movie in front of the TV, right? But that, this isn't one of them. Um, just love this stuff. Really peppery, actually, as well, and fantastic blend of spices. You know, definitely, definitely one of the best things that Andy Tower's ever done. And to think it was his first perfume. Um, Denby says, I'm not sure if the perception of a smoother blend just comes down to age in bottle versus newer macerations. Very, very good point. Thank you or if it's actually down to differences in formulation. I haven't been to the Osmotex, so I can't say myself. No, very good point, well made. My Way says, did you try Armani uh, Ver Malachite? Oh, we, we can't go off topic now because we've only have eight, eight minutes. Teacup, hello everyone, thanks for coming on. Uh, Shimon again says, I find Ala Nuit a very comforting evening perfume. Yes, yeah, okay, so I guess what you're saying, yes, it can be night, but it doesn't have to be dangerous night. Correct, correct. Um, Let's do the one that I said is a solid floor that I reckon probably some of you won't have heard of. Let me know if you have, by the way. This is, now you can see here, this is called Gajra, which I'm reliably informed means garland, the flower garlands that uh, women in India wear, and, and I guess not just in India, so often made of um, jasmine petals, jasmine blossoms. And this is from a brand a company that, that has only one shop in India. It's in the city of Lucknow, where I was very, very fortunate to go and visit them a few years ago. Um, I try to find them online. I've talked about them before. They're called, if you can see that there, Sukanth Co. And I will obviously mention their name in the video description below. They have got some really, really beautiful things. They do ship internationally. And I know a few people who've watched my videos where I've mentioned them before have actually got in touch with them and they have managed to get uh, some products from them. Now, this is hard to put on the blotter. So I am actually, this is a little rollerball oil. I am actually going to put this on skin. And so this goes into the category of, you know, note perfect jasmine solly floors. Um, it's so good. Ashfaq says, oh, that one has... Uh, Jasmine Sandback in it. Okay, so you know it. Good. Um, oh, and Elvanui says, hello everyone from Hungary. Ow, I'm so late. Doesn't matter. Arkadiusz says, ombre leather would be my pick um, for a Jasmine. Or, or have I lost the thread now? And this is... Th th this is... Um, darker, more mysterious than the Alain Nuit. I mean, I, li I like your word, um, Shimon, that Alain Nuit is comforting. I, I, I think you're kind of managing to express something there that maybe I was struggling to express. Um, because the the Gajra from Sukhantko is bright, it is sunny, but it's less comforting. It's got, I guess it's got more of an edge to it. Um, everything is in the right place. So you've got the green notes, you've got the banana-like notes, You've got the musky notes, you've got the woody aspects, you've got lots and lots of indolic aspects, that, more than in the, the, the Lutins. Um, and I guess it's also, maybe with this idea of the garlands, it's, this has got more of a sort of human presence in it. The, the Serge Lutins is somehow more outdoorsy, but this has got a skin element to it. You know, you, you, you feel as though you're sort of coming up to here on somebody and when you smell their garland, you're also getting the smell of their body a bit. Um, it's more intimate. It's more intimate than Alain Lee. Um, really, really beautiful. Do, do check them out, honestly. Um, you will get the proper spelling of their name in the video description after YouTube has done its thing. Uh, La Religieuse from Lutins is a beautiful austere jasmine. Perfect for wintertime, says Kenzo. Thank you. Elvanoui Jasmine, it's blooming right under my window now. Uh, Songe's 
Polony pillowy jasmine is my favourite, and we did songe. Ashfaq says, the weather in the subcontinent is so hot and humid that we need stronger stuff. Yeah, this would withstand you. I remember when I bought it in Lucknow, I wore it a lot when I was in India and, and really enjoyed it. Napak says, a side note, have you tried putting jasmine in a pitcher, leaving it overnight? I grew up in Thailand and my mother would pick jasmine from her garden to do that. The water gets so fragrant. And, and then do you drink it? Is that, is that the idea? Sounds like a good idea. And the last one, the last one, number 10 in my list of the top 10, my top 10 favorite jasmine perfumes. This is another sort of symphonic one. Um, this is Trai from Nila Vermeer Creations, released in 2011. Can't believe this is also almost 10 years old. Gosh, composed by Bertrand Duchaufour. This is one of the, the original trio. So when Nila Vermeer released her perfumes, Trai was one of the original ones to, together with Moher and Bombay Bling. And this is actually in the original bottle. The bottle looks slightly different now. Same idea, same design, but, but um, slightly different execution. I love this stuff. And I remember when I uh, first reviewed it, when it came out. Um, oh gosh, is this going to work? Okay, and this is how the episode ends with me not managing to... No, we're all right. Phew. Um, this reminds, reminded me in some ways of, uh, of Samsara. Now, this, this, this isn't just a, a jasmine for perfume. It, it really isn't just a jasmine perfume. It's, it's a huge, huge, huge bouquet of lots and lots of things. Um, but I guess jasmine is, is one of the main notes in it. Um, yeah, because actually we could be here all day if I told you all of the, all, um, the, 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 um, the things that are in it as well. It's got that beautiful steamed milk Indian dessert note. It's got the cardamom. It's got the cinnamon. It's, it's got really, really beautiful sandalwood. It's got an incense note running through it, um, but 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 there is this I, th I think this jasmine core, this jasmine sandalwood core, and that's why and you know smelling it and again now reminds me, that's why I I, I thought of samsara um, when I first uh, smelt it because it, it it seems as though it's a uh, I mean, it's not like samsara, but in terms of the structure, in terms of the idea of, you know, sort of taking a jasmine sandalwood and dressing it up. So this is, this is, this is, this is richer, this is denser, this is, um, this is more epic. You know, samsara does, does, does a, has, has a more meditative quality, whereas this is a sort of epic sweep through decades and decades, if not centuries of Indian history, and you just pick up so many things and it's also sweeter it, it it's got a sort of kind of gourmand element to it you know with the with the with the steamed milk note um but oh i haven't smelt this for a while actually and it's just beautiful really really beautiful so we've done 10 and we're under an hour so i should just quickly look at the comments yeah so what was the answer to my jasmine water question the day after put some ice cubes in says napak and it's great i love that idea actually that must be really really good um love jasmine green tea says angela this streaming brings back my childhood memory says napak well i haven't got any jasmine blossoms but if i manage to get hold of some i will do that uh, ashwak says your tray looks quite dark um well, it's been kept in the dark and in the cool. Is there any ginger in Trai? Says Amy. There's probably everything in Trai. But yeah, maybe a kind of fizz of ginger. Um, and straight to the shops for that one then, says Angela. And Denby said, ginger is used as a fresh sort of top note in Trai. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, I, I deliberately don't look at this, the official list of notes here, but um, it's, it's, got a, it's got a kind of gentle fizz to it. But What's wonderful about Trai is that is you, you get this symphonic effect. So, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for all of the comments. Uh, please keep them coming, even if you're watching uh, the recording. Um, Trai's cardamom beginning is very nostalgic, says Davlaud. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just love everything about Trai. Like I said, um, we're not going to have any, any live episodes for a little while. I would think for at least a couple of weeks. But that gives some of you a, a, a chance to catch up with what's happening on the blog on personalize.com and also watching some of the older videos. Please stay tuned to the to my usual social media channels, you know, Instagram, Twitter, etc., Facebook, to find out when the next episode will be broadcast. But until then, um, look after yourselves, be good, and thank you very much for watching and for, um, for for taking part and making this so much fun. Take care. Bye.